um hey welcome everybody i'm gonna do a quick poll to see where you're from so that we can st um, start breaking the ice But, but um, uh, welcome everybody. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whichever part of the world you're listening for, uh, from. And um, I have um, announcement, okay. Um, about 30, 35 minutes, I can go over a bit after that. Um, I have a hard stop at 11.15, which is my local time. And um, the way I want to spend the 30 minutes is start with a presentation that's uh, five, 10 minutes, uh, kind of like uh, walk you through uh, what, uh, what does it mean for a PM jobs in ML and AI space, and then probably open up uh, the floor for, for Q&A discussion if there are any questions. So I'm going to start sharing my screen. All right, um, so uh, I'm get, I can see my own screen that I'm sharing. So just wanna make sure that if uh, uh, others are also can see the screen if, um, okay, cool. All right, um, so as I mentioned, uh, I wanna like quickly uh, cover a few, a few slides and just kind of open up for the uh, Q&A or discussions and anything that I can answer from my side. Um, so obviously, I'm going to talk about PM jobs in ML and AI space. Um, a quick thing about uh, myself. Uh, so my name is Kapil, pronouns he, his. I'm based in Seattle. And if you would like to connect with me uh, on LinkedIn, my LinkedIn handle is Kapil528. Uh, again, it's Kapil528. And then uh, I'll be happy to you know, like get connected, stay connected, and kind of like uh, help uh, whichever areas I can. And... Um, uh, the uh, I have pretty simple mantra to kind of like uh, spend most of my work days, including also weekends, is uh, products. Like I'm very passionate about how uh, product uh, products work, like how they make our life better or how they solve our pain points. And they're not necessarily software products. They could be, you know, like hardware products, services, uh, uh, tangible, intangible, all of that, right? Like that's how it helps me to stay more uh, product management, a uh, product management oriented in my career as well as life. Uh, I'm super motivated by people. So one of the pictures from my uh, team outing. Uh, so always, you know, like keep learning from people and keep giving back to the community. And one of my uh, hobbies is um, travel. So I've been uh, all over the places and my favorite uh, city to visit is Montreal, Canada. And uh, my favorite place to visit uh, in nature is a crater Lake Oregon. And just a quick uh, call out uh, that all the material I'm presenting, it's solely my personal point of view, it, uh, general knowledge, and does not represent any company or my current employment. <clears throat> all right, so I'm gonna connect three dots for us. Uh, is like, what is the ML and AI space? And what are the uh, PM jobs in ML and how to you know like uh, go about it, right? So well, there are many challenges adopting uh, ML in um, many, many companies, and I'm not going to go through the entire list, but, you know, like just to throw some keywords, right? On the left side, we have things, those um, are part of the job and the uh, job description role and things that are a product manager in a, uh, ML space. So not only product managers, but anybody in ML and AI space, data science space, uh, they have to uh, uh, deal with, or it's part of their daily job. One of the big call out I want to do is the implementations, right? So the data science and ML is uh, uh, applications are way different than traditional software engineer, primarily because the data science expertise is needed. Like you, you have to know what is the object function you're going after and how do you achieve the model accuracy? How do you re uh, re remove the bias? How much bias is still okay? And all those things, you need like a special expertise in that area, so that uh, you know, like th that way, adopting ML is not just you know like adopting an open source uh, from the internet. 
And another uh, quick call out is the value, right? So it is very difficult to maximize the value delivered uh, because, you know, like it's such a complex uh, life cycle in terms of maintaining the uh, ML uh, models. And there uh, we will cover in the subsequent uh, uh, slide, what are these life cycle and what are these aspects? And all of that uh, needs product thinking. Like uh, you cannot say that, oh, this is very data science heavy. This is very technical. This is very ML science. This is very data engineering heavy. You still need product thinking because you need to achieve that speed of delivery. You need to achieve that quality of product. And for any product you talk, <clears throat> there are usually three P's, people, product, and processes. And that's why, you know, like the uh, product management role in AI and ML space uh, definitely is a valuable one. Um, another one is that like, you know, like if we take the previous slide and kind of like create a word, a cloud from it, it will look something like this, right? There are challenges when, you know, like you start solving a problem with ML, but how do you scale it? How do you put it into the production and put it into production or uh, test it out in a, a wild uh, live traffic? It takes a village because, you know, like, you need to consider all of these things as a product manager, right? Or even like somebody's working on a ML or AI based uh, product or a, a solution. And the uh, highlighted keywords are essentially, you know, like uh, represent some of the common themes across the many industries, uh, many different uh, the solutions, like stability of the, your life cycle, stability of your model, cost has been very, very important, right? Um, um, uh, okay, so I think that's, yeah, like I see Felix is asking, you're kind of covering a bit now, uh, but how about the domain uh, knowledge? So that's, I think, yes. Uh, uh, so th th the idea is here that the ML space and how it's related to the product management. So now the uh, let's talk about uh, the uh, domain knowledge for the PMs, right? So, you know, like if you search sample job listing from like internet, these are the four different job listings that I, I was able to find. And if you see that, like what uh, they are asking for, what are their highlight key points? So uh, like if you take this and convert into the main key points, like how do you go about building the domain knowledge as a PM in the ML space? So this, uh, uh, this diagram here represents like how a product manager can be uh, somebody who is very generic product manager to a domain expert, right? So in PM basics, like uh, obviously, like you understand the product, you understand the domain, you understand the jobs to be done. So when, it's, uh, when, when I say domain, it's the industry, it's the, tr the customer you are serving for, whether it's travel industry, insurance, or the uh, let's say streaming industry or even uh, you know like uh, let's say uh, education right so you have to understand the domain you have to understand like what is your user base what problem you're trying to solve and then uh, jobs to be done like what is your job on that particular team and what uh, what you're trying to solve and then uh, you know like as you uh, go from top to bottom and left to right that's where you know like you will have to find like how you can become that uh, uh, go from level of you know like uh, the basic to confident to advanced to master in terms of uh, product management. So I want to quickly co uh, focus uh, two main things: the ML and AI uh, space in terms of product managers. So as a product manager, you uh, always try to achieve like how you can become basic to expert, and that's why I wanted to cover these earlier slides like how you became the expert uh, in your domain, right? Then understand the ML models and life cycle. Like what are these, like how do you develop? How do you train? How do you test? How do you deploy to production? How do you measure the, the output, the outcome of your model into the production? Then what are the feature sets, ML concepts are needed to make your model better and keep iterating it? And while you're doing that, the, there is a cost associated with, there is a, Opportunity costs you need, as I mentioned in my pre uh, first slide, you need experts. The experts are very expensive, right? Uh, in terms of uh, like their time, uh, like how much uh, they, they cost uh, to a, any company. So I think uh, in that sense, you have to know how to go about observing, you know, like your metrics, your KPIs and costs. 
and the data. Data drives enterprise. No ML science, no data science project will ever begin, will ever be complete with data, right? So you have to you have to understand what type of data you need, where is that data situated in your company or even outside the world, like for example, Kaggle, like some uh, uh, public sources, and how do you uh, channel that data? Like there's data governance, there's data compliance, then uh, you have to understand the difference between PCI, PII, like data categories. And then uh, as a, a PM in ML, maybe it will be your direct responsibility to you know like come up with data products or knowledge graphs, or you will work with peer products, peer uh, teams or sister teams that builds these data products, that builds this knowledge graph. So you have to understand like how that knowledge graph fits into your requirement and how that can be fit to the model. And because, you know, like uh, there are many, many teams responsible for like data, model development, model deployment, you have to understand the dependencies. What are the SLS between dependencies? Like how do you extract, transform and load your data and channel it to your team? So, you know, like as a PM, you are constantly juggling stakeholder management, constantly juggling these dependencies. But when we say PM in ML space, you have to understand like, how data solves your problem and how that leads to the second part, which is analysis and uh, BI, business intelligence. Again, you may not be directly responsible for doing analysis and BI, but you will be working with these folks to understand any test and learn you are trying to do, what is the power analysis output, what are the impact, what are the metrics you're going after. So that's you know like how the, the, the product management and the ML space are uh, intertwined with each other. The last one uh, I wanted to cover is like how to go uh, about preparing, uh, uh, you know, like if you are in the process of going through a, uh, a job in PML and ML space, or you are trying to switch the domain, you're trying to switch the job, then this is where, you know, like uh, just like a, a quick guide, uh, do your research uh, uh, like about the job description. Job description tells a lot about these slides we covered, right? So for example, these job description, like what is the expected out of you as a, a PM, whether it's a domain expert or a, a generalized uh, product management, like, and all those things, right? So understand that from your dis uh, job description. Do some research uh, from social networks, such as, you know, like LinkedIn and other ones. So that you know, like you understand, uh, like what what is the uh, uh, social space about that uh, problem? Who are these people? Like, can you try to see their uh, profile, like where they come from, and all those things? If you can find an internal connection working in the company, that's you know, like uh, a, a amazing resource to find out more information about the company. The uh, again, the people, company, and then tune your resume based on what you find. Uh, it's not about like hide and show certain things, but just basically how do you, uh, you know, like strengthen your resume in the direction of what you find about the job description. Second one is the hiring team, like leverage the hiring team. A lot of uh, hiring team gives you a lot of information, you know, like preparation material and all those things. So use that. Use the screening call with the hiring manager as the uh, medium to find more about the job, like why uh, what you will be doing. And many, many times hiring manager are super, super helpful because they genuinely want to help you. So in like uh, use that uh, connection and use that uh, screening call uh, in, uh, uh, gaining more information about the role. The next one is the interview prep, uh, pretty uh, generic, you know, like uh, practice your intro, practice PM loop questions and uh, be ready to share your work within permitted criteria. Like if you have built something amazing, uh, and then uh, if you can show it to the world, uh, be ready to share that during the interviews, during the hiring process, so that, you know, like you can, uh, the picture is worth thousand words, right? So that's the idea behind it. And ask questions, like many, many questions. The more questions you ask, better you get uh, understanding about the role. And uh, just want to uh, do a quick uh, cap here uh, with my presentation is the cards in your sleep. Uh, I usually tell people there are two cards in your sleep. Like one is that, if your previous or current role is a great overlap, then you speak to like how the learning curve will be smaller and how you can make the impact right away and vice versa. Like if, they, if, if you see a gap in your skills and your experience from the job descriptions, speak like how you will address those. Uh, so that's, you know, like uh, I had uh, in my uh, presentation, 
I'm uh, I'm gonna uh, I'll try to answer the question as much as possible. But let me see if I can open up this for uh, you know like a, a forum, and then we can talk. Uh, take some of these questions. Can uh, can you guys um, can uh, one of you uh, speak uh, and see if I can? I'm not able to hear anybody. Okay, moderation. So I think I'm live. Hi, Kapil. Yep. Thank can you. you. Can live. Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, thank you for the presentation. It was very valuable, especially in the field of machine learning, which is so specific. My question is about um, working with data scientists. As you just mentioned, they're very valuable, expensive resources. But at the same time, like a good, proper model deserves a lot of data cleaning. And data yeah. cleaning can take like really long or so how do you define like this deadline to say, guys, enough is enough. We got to deliver. Let's run the model as it is. Or it's better to take longer to sharpen and have a better precision accuracy um, as a response to the predictions. Yeah. So how do you uh, balance that? Yeah. That's a great question. Uh, uh, Juliana, am I saying your name right? Juliana, actually. Juliana, from... okay, cool. Yeah, uh, Juliana, yeah, that's a great question. I think the answer uh, to some extent depends. So for example, uh, uh, as a product manager, you want to test as early as possible so that you can find out whether you are right, uh, on right path or not mm -hmm. so that you can course correct very, very quickly. At the same time, you, you know, like you might, uh, the stakeholder and your user or you yourself might get discouraged from a very a mediocre output of the model, which is paid on smaller data and cold start problem. So you have to find what is your story? Like, how are you going to break that story to your leadership, your team, and your stakeholders saying that, hey, like, this is the North Star. This is where we're trying to go. And if you walk backward, step one, phase one, limited data, it just to try out and find the signal. And if that story sticks, then you like you can go to like try uh, try things out. If not, then you have to like, you know, like push. Usually there is time, resources and scope, right? So you have to always balance that equation. So come up with your story, find out what it, what are you are after. And if you know there is already a signal, you're on right track and you need more time, then you have to, you know, like work on your story to push back and get that data. And that's one of the things I like PM in ML and AI space, that it's such an amazing space to problem to solve. But as a product manager, how do we tell story? How do we connect stakeholders who are less technical? How do we interpret the model output? I think that's the key. And you have to choose like what is your circumstances. And based on that, either you, you know, like roll forward with limited data or you push back with your story saying that these are the reasons we're going to push back. Great, great response. Like really I forgot to consider the stakeholder is the definition of how accurate you want. It's really going to depend on, on the problem. Super thanks. Okay. I appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. Any, anybody else? Comments, questions, ideas? Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll go. One of the things that I think I've been struggling with is that I've kind of had like some limited exposure and some past product roles into like ML applications. Um, but I think to me, like the biggest gap I've seen and maybe like the maturity of the company was there is like, um, like knowing more about like deployment, like model deployment and lifecycle management. Like, I feel like that's an area I don't have a lot of experience with, like understanding like precision recall and like model performance that I understand that I've found resources on, but like, where is a good place to get resources and kind of increase my depth of expertise when it comes to like model deployment and management. So I'm prepared to have those conversations when I'm interviewing. Yeah, I think, um, uh, thanks, Kenneth. That's a good question. So 
in terms of how do you um, get expert, you have to constantly keep learning. You have to keep trying. And, uh, you know, like uh, uh, as a product manager in the ML and AI space, I think uh, you are hitting a very good point here that how you can become hands-on is the key, right? So it's like, oh, I just don't care like about the the model is being trained. Okay, like that's fine and all, uh, uh, what, what's next, right? So uh, if you become that expert, you understand, okay, like you can ask better questions. For example, if your data scientist say, I'm training model, you're gonna ask questions like, do you have enough data? What volume you're gonna train? How long your training exercise uh, gonna happen and all those things. Same thing with model deployment. Like, is it prod, non-prod? Like, are we deploying on the like new version, new model? Are we A-B testing? Are we running a multiple models? All those questions, you will build muscle memory, you know, like more and more hands-on you do it. Um, I'm happy to connect with you like on LinkedIn or, or like my email address is like me at my first name, last name.com, which is me at kapilganganer.com. You know, like uh, I can chat, I can, you know, like share all the slides I've uh, created in that area so that, you know, like we can uh, get going. It, it will be tough to, you know, like give you very specific focus answer within like a uh, few seconds. So happy to chat more and like how I can, you know, like get you more involved into learning these things. Thanks, I really appreciate that. Yeah. Hey, Kapil, uh, thanks for hey, your Sunday. presentation there. Uh, yeah. um, ML AI is a kind of a, I don't have experience in it. Uh, I've been product manager of B2B e-commerce and web kind of projects for, for a while, uh, including, uh, you know, uh, several credit card journeys and those kind of things. So. I bumped into this session and I found it very interesting. So being a non-technical guy, I pride myself actually more on the UX and the business side of things and business side of product management, uh, really getting the stakeholders and analysis and understand the problem and then coming up with the solution and working with whoever to solve that. So if I was uh, curious enough for this ML AI um, and I'm kind of shying away from it, thinking it's way too technical and it's too much, do you think that's a fair fair thing on my part, or should I really go into it because it's because uh, it's maybe the new thing or the evolving thing or may already evolved? Like, am I increasing my career scope by going into it? And and if I am, if so, then how do I go about it? Like, you know, yeah. can I start at the junior level in that ML AI PM while I'm a senior PM in here? Would the yeah. com company consider me for those roles, or I will be way too underqualified for that? Yeah. So I think that's a good question, Sandeep. And um, I'll give you a quick, uh, like when, before I became product manager, I was machine learning engineer. Before I was machine learning engineer, I was data engineer. And before I was data engineer, I was traditional software engineer doing, uh, doing Java J2A stuff, right? So even like I went through a transition. So uh, like, how do you progress in career? Like, I think it depends a lot on your context and the company and the people around you. And that's why in my first introduction slide, I mentioned people are very important part of our career development, right? So like how these, uh, so for example, if you're senior at your current uh, level, like can you, uh, can you learn enough about ML and just be a lateral move and you're not starting from one level, uh, uh, like two mm -hmm. levels down. And that will come from the people who will believe in you or who will not believe in you, right? So I think that's the thing. Like I'm happy to chat more about my progress uh, or personally. Now the ML space, in my opinion, there is no field that is not using technology. There is no field that's gonna not use ML. And uh, we are about a decade uh, away from like true AI, even though we say AI now, because AI takes tremendous amount of machine learning ML over and over and over again to get to uh, AI space, right? So just for the ML space, I think there is no escape from ML, right? Whether you are directly involved or not involved, right? So even let's say in your current role, you might end up with, uh, chatting with the peer products or some solution, those are ML based. So having un like understanding those concepts mm -hmm. might help your current job better. You might able to ask better questions, mm -hmm. probe better and all those things. So I think I would say that like you, regardless whether you have interest to make the career progression or not, understanding how ML work, at least like ML 101, 102 level will definitely help you in your career, uh, like regardless of what problem you're trying to solve because everything is moving in that direction. A lot of companies are under pressure. 
because everybody around them is doing ml and ai so mm-hmm. they they tend to you know like uh, try to do ml so i think in if you think from that angle having that uh, uh, like understanding will definitely help you now about career progression i think that's you know like something uh, like your personal choice whether uh, you know like what uh, uh, curve on career you are what uh, risk you're willing to take and what not but you know like we can chat about that offline but i think just to cap my answer understanding ml and all the th- i will uh, present my deck but understanding these keywords like what does it mean like accuracy biases and all those things will definitely help you in longer run very right enough thank you so much thank you yep yep cool any uh tim uh anybody else i think yeah that if not i think uh i will be uh here uh if anybody has any questions um uh hey then sorry my internet uh, no worries yeah <laughs> um but uh I, and i i might have missed some and i hopefully i'm not repeating but uh so i have experience where in my previous role we my company had started a uh had created uh, um an ai ml based product for um acquisition advertising um in the very specific niche i was in um and my role there was heading up our acquisition advertising practice and so that was there um obviously my area of expertise however at first just out of curiosity um and and then obviously because it very much pertained to my role and was essentially replacing some of the things we were doing i got very very involved uh t- constantly talking with our data scientists engineers mm-hmm. to the point where like our our um chief data and product officer wanted to meet regularly to strategize on the project yeah. um so <laughs> like i have a very big interest in ai and ml but i don't have an understanding of it in the technical sense in terms of like coding it um like i understand how it works i understand you know the inputs and how you know how models are being trained um yeah. but i guess i think in an interview it might be a little bit easier to kind of get that across but just looking at the first step how um if you're looking at um you know linkedin or a resume how can that be summarized in a way where you would really believe that um yeah So I think yeah, that's a good uh, question uh, Eden um am I saying your name uh, name right Eden Yeah Yeah so I think uh, uh, in terms of uh, learning so my suggestion would be draw a pyramid and then you know like uh, understand like generic concept and then okay like uh, you know, because ml is like you have to like train test like you have to deploy models and all those things unless you uh, you are a pm on the role it's very difficult to learn everything and be a- everywhere right so i would suggest that draw a pyramid where you know like you will say i know everything about ml in terms of concept taxonomy definitions life cycle then next level okay i'm not going to worry about data engineering etls and what not i'm not going to worry about how the model outputs are consumed i'm going to focus on like how model thinks right then that will be your uh, layer so as you go up the pyramid and then you like you will decide like uh, like oh my uh, in like i know everything about ml but if you ask me like how to improve model accuracy i can speak about it i can like deliver i know how to achieve that right so find your pyramid build your pyramid a pyramid and then that will i think help you to you know like see uh, or, you know like how to go about whether it's career switch job uh, 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 like switching jobs or even working with different uh, products so i think that's the framework i started using like because you cannot learn everything while your job intels to ask you something right so i think that would be my uh, suggestions and again like happy to continue chatting either on linkedin or uh, direct email thank you so much for your time so i'm looking for a product management opportunity So, if your team or anyone you know is hiring, it it sounds really straightforward. I know, but I don't want to waste time in the short talk. Yeah. So, small talk. What should I should ask? 
Yeah, I mean, like, uh, there are companies hiring. So I, I saw people, po- somebody posted an uh, air table, uh, what do you call, a chart, what companies are hiring. Uh, as far as, like, uh, my current company, like, I'm uh, not on the hiring team as well as I don't know anybody is. But, you know, like, I'm more than happy to connect you with the, the so my social connection who uh, I know are hiring. Uh, and then, you know, like, we can take it from there. Yeah, yeah. I see, like, I see the, yeah, the exactly same what uh, Katya posted on the chat. Like, that's the Airtable uh, link I was mentioning. So, uh, can I have your email address? Yeah, it's me, M-E, at kapilgangane.com. Huh? I'm sorry? I'll type it in the chat. Okay. Hey, Snail. There's, there's no chat box on my side. Oh, so uh, it's, uh, I, can, I can spell it out. It's me, M-E. At I'm sorry. M E like. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. M M M as in Mary, E as in Edward. Okay. At K A P P as in Peter L Gangane G A N G A N E dot com. K A P L K A P I L G A N G A N E dot com. G E N G E N dot com. Yeah. And also, like, uh, 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 Katya posted my LinkedIn uh, profile. So if you uh, connect me there, I can also share the, some of the resources. Okay. So it must be on the initial pages. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Snail. Yep. Hi. Good luck, Anupriya. Yeah. Hi, it was nice listening to you today. Um, thank you so much for that. I'm actually uh, not so much into MI or uh, ML or AI, but uh, I wanted to ask you a few things about just baking into product management. Mm-hmm. So um, right now, I mean, I'm in my last semester. Uh, I will be graduating in December. So I would be, uh, so I'm applying for jobs starting uh, Jan 2023. And one question I want to ask is, now, uh, I've read a lot of things and um, job descriptions where they require a lot of technical knowledge for product managers, but it's not possible to have all the knowledge. So it's really overwhelming for me in terms of preparing because I have had no prior experience, like work experience. So I'm, it just feels like I'm trying to learn everything just because it's expected, but what actual technical skills are really required while working um, in that role? Yeah, I think uh, I don't know at what point you uh, joined the conversation, but my last slide uh, where I mentioned about the uh, preparation guide, I can share the uh, deck with you. But in I think like the first uh, square, right? When you do research about job, like try to find the keywords from the job description. And usually those job descriptions, it's like a ask you a lot and then try to create a, a heat map like of those keywords, what is the primary role uh, they are looking for? What were, what will be your responsibility? And then if you see that, oh, like, do you check like all of them or most of them boxes, that could be a way to go about it. And then, you know, like one of the cards in your sleeves could be like, you know, like whatever you've done so far, if it overlaps, try to exploit that saying that, hey, I can deliver this. I've done it. Be confident about it. If you see the gap, either like basically speak saying that, hey, like this is my plan to, you know, like fill those gaps in or you proactively start, you know, like working on those, like uh, uh, product school is a a great option, but you can also do like the uh, 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 other learning sessions. You can also start doing something hands-on, like uh, uh, build a product, right? They always say, right? So uh, that could be one way. And as I was mentioning to Eden that, draw a pyramid like of the skills that are needed and then like the what you want to be generalized and how we go up to the specialized one right so as you mentioned that like maybe ml and ai space probably is not your first go to step like you want to just break into the product management right so like yeah. getting those basics down then step step number 2 like like how do you apply your pm basics to the job like jobs to be done right 
So if I uh, share my screen again so that uh, we can window this guy, right? So if you see this slide, this slide talks about uh, the initial first one is PM basics. Like it has nothing to do with ML and AI. It's about product management. In a frictionless world, product managers don't have job. Our job and responsibility is to either eliminate or reduce that friction. And that's what covers in a basic uh, uh, PM, right? Understanding job, understanding job, a domain, jobs to be done. And then, you know, like you, you, you will never pro probably, uh, if you want to, uh, don't want to work in ML and AI directly, that's fine because you are uh, probably you are uh, you are uh, leaning towards other areas of product management, but you will be you know like crossing path with different aspects of a ML and AI. Then like how do you stay on the basic side but understand basic? So this grid here is you know like starts from how from a generalize all the way to how you become specialized understanding ML and uh, data. So I think that would be strategy I would apply like understand uh, the the job the role do your homework uh, like make your help your connections uh, use your connection to help you understand more and i think uh, based on that uh, you know like you will start breaking more into it again happy to touch base uh, offline and uh, walk you through like the process that worked for me okay yeah yeah that sounds great thank you so much for yep. that anybody else hi can I ask a quick question? Yep. Hi, thanks for uh, taking the time to um, share your insights. Um, I I have a similar question to an earlier question from Sandeep. Uh, um, basically, I am tra trying to transition into a PM role from a non-technical background. And I'm curious from a hiring uh, team perspective, whether I'll be seen as more competitive in applying to a uh, associate product manager role or any entry level role versus trying to work on those pyramid and try to apply to a more senior level roles? What would, what would be a better strategy, especially in terms of this recent uh, layoffs from all these tech companies yep, and yep. The, the technical PMs coming in? Yeah, so I think that's a good question. I uh, So my um, there is no easy or straightforward answer, but this is my personal point of view that the job interviews treat them as a two-way uh, uh, street, right? So it's like they are asking questions, but you are also, you know, like evaluating them whether this is the right role for me, this is the right team for me, like whether this is the right setup for me. Like uh, they, um, most of like, as I mentioned during my presentation, most of hiring manager are very, very nice. Will be They're trying to help you out. They're trying to give you hints, right? So like ask them direct questions, like why, like, hey, you know, like I have done this and I think this will be applicable to this job uh, in this role. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Like, do, what do you see a uh, limitation in, in my candidacy to this uh, role, right? Uh, and then, you know, like be uh, upfront and vocal about it so that you, you know, like it's an iteration uh, and then like you get a better at it. And uh, like I said, treat it two-way direction and ask them questions like whether what is lagging, how you can fix it, and uh, uh, again, like uh, uh, repeating the same message, card in your sleeves, how your previous experience you can apply in technical world. Because end of day, like you are here to solve the problem. You are speaking on behalf of customer. You are speaking customer's language. You are data driven. You are uh, data informed. All those things, technical, non-technical, they are common because those are fundamentals about how to go uh, build a product or solve a customer problem or a user pain point, right? So I think like, draw those commonalities and use them as your strength and then add your uh, bits like your your personality, you know, like your energy, like uh, all, all the things you can bring in from non-technical world still applicable or add on to the technical side. And as I was saying earlier, like you have to keep learning whether even like technical field, uh, you have to constantly keep learning, keep honing your skills. So I think that learning curve is always constant regardless whether you're technical, non-technical. So those are the key things, you know, like, uh, again, like uh, happy to chat more. It's just, you know, like difficult to give answer in specific uh, like uh, time set, but uh, like uh, just to reiterate and recap, treat interview as two-way uh, two uh, street, ask questions, exploit what you have done, what overlaps with you, 
and ask them like how you can uh, like what are their concerns in terms of gaps and just kind of work it out and then like uh, be a good storyteller because as a product manager that's what it it it, it need, we need right and uh, you can learn this technical stuff uh you can learn storytelling you can learn, build the uh, product uh, management a uh, muscle memory and it's a learning curve how do you tell your story to the hiring team uh, is uh, really important thank you that's very helpful thanks um actually i have one more question um if you don't mind uh can we give felix a quick yeah. uh, opportunity yeah. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. So first of all, thanks, uh, Kapil. I also love that the slides seem to be made with AI. Uh, I'm kind of wondering there, do you have any sort of top tips for top technologies to look into that would be, you know, big in a few years uh, for PMs or um, generally, like, is, is there any specific technologies you think we should be aware of? Um, specific technologies. Um, so I think uh, a couple of stuff like, uh, uh, I'm not sure I'm that expert in terms of like telling you like, hey, Felix, go and learn this. But look look for the things that, for example, chat GPT, right? Like everybody went crazy over like chat GPT. Like, oh, this is like AI bot that has a like a, a philosophical context and all those things, right? So uh, I would uh, split into two parts. One, what's going viral and why it's going viral. Because a lot of times that virality has two aspects. One is the social aspect. And one is the data loop because it, like it's going viral because like one thing is leading leading to other thing and a do domino effect. So that would be my uh, uh, one go to th things I would say, uh, right? And another would be like uh, just try to see like how these big companies launch the product. For example, Snowflake, Databricks, for example, or like other uh, cl uh, uh, cloud-based data warehouse. They have you know like over a period of many many years they have learned these big corporate pain points. Then also learn like how, uh, for example, one of my favorite products is Notion, uh, uh, like how they came about uh, 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 like adding these templates and they started, uh, uh, you know, like offering their products to the companies. And then what is the, uh, like basically dismantle a product that will tell you the problem and the direction they're trying to go. And then once you have that, try to see what are other competition then that will give you the direction of the companies are trying to go. And then they are likely will use the common set of technology, whether it's a set of cloud technology, such as AWS, Azure cloud, uh, things like that, or, you know, like uh, the tools like uh, Databricks, Kubel and whatnot, or, you know, like Spark and TensorFlow. So I think that you, you have to basically draw a Venn diagram and see what direction they are going and try to pick interest. Uh, I just try to be ge ge generalized uh, in terms of what I learned, just like everywhere, because that helps me at least break the ice and learn more. Uh, I don't have a specific vertical domain. I try to, you know, like focus on, I just try to uh, stay horizontal as much as possible. Thanks. Great answer. Yeah. So uh, back to you. And then I think uh, we'll uh, cap. Yeah. So um, quick question. Um, while applying for associate also, because I've been applying for this kind of roles since the past few months now, uh, I keep track of uh, like all the applicants that are applying alongside. And um, on the LinkedIn, you can actually find like uh, senior, how many senior level applicants are there for this position. So I find it really frustrating that even for associate level positions, a lot of senior level people are applying. So how is it fair to us who are um, just entering the market or, you know, uh, for whom the position is actually uh, been there? So uh, one question for you would be, um, do they, um, so the hiring manager or recruiter, do they also take in consideration the senior level applicants uh, because they're applying or because the position is meant for associate level applicants, they will just focus on them? Um, um, I, I won't be able to talk to, um, on behalf of like all the hiring teams and hiring manager, it's just that how they uh, see the role and they probably are just trying to, you know, like uh, they're trying to get the best candidate from a bigger sample pool. But this is like a going back to my answer to Tay, like treat this as a, a bi-directional, uh, uh, the interview or job role as a bi-directional street and ask them questions like, hey, like this role says X, Y, Z and like I'm associate, do you think like, uh, are there any uh, gaps? Or it can be other way around. Like the role might be asking less and you might have more to offer, right? 
then play that card saying that, oh, like, yeah, like, I'm very excited. I like, I'm very confident learning curve. I can deliver impact and all those things. So, so I think uh, you have to, uh, it, it, you know, like at end of day, it's a, it's a game. Whatever cards you have in your uh, sleeves, so some cards are in your sleeves, some cards in your hands, right? So you have to know what, what is the, uh, what is the fair game from your standpoint and how do you go and play about it? Uh, unfortunately, there is no easy or simple answer like how, you know, like how people apply and whatnot. But things that you can control is basically like these, right? Like yeah. uh, do the, the do the research, interview prep, uh, leverage the hiring team, uh, ask them more hints, sample questions. Uh, there are many resources that tell you uh, for which company what questions they ask, and then like how do you uh, go about you know uh, about that? So. Some of the things are out of our control. What we can control is our skills, keep learning, keep trying and not lose hope. Uh, and, uh, you know, like, I'm pretty sure, like, you're talented and you, with your skills, you know, like, the 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 right, you will end up a right job and it the, you will get the feeling like, yes, this is the right thing for me. And you will, you know, like, definitely keep excelling. Thank you so much. So, yep. I think uh, uh, I have a, a hard stop now because uh, I have my uh, uh, daytime job. So uh, if Kanupriya, if you have a question, do you mind posting it on chat so that I can take it offline? Uh, you're on mute. I'm sorry, I have requested you on LinkedIn. One, okay. and secondly, I wanted to know a uh, pricing strategy or any books or courses for pricing strategies for products in AI and ML space. So whenever you get a chance, you can let me know. Absolutely, yeah. I have a very excellent resource uh, on the topic, uh, a podcast. I will send the link as soon as, you know, like I get a chance. Uh, it uh, talks exactly the same thing, like uh, AI products and spri uh, pricing. So I'll definitely, you know, like uh, uh, send that uh, resource to you. Can, can you message over LinkedIn? This chat is not accessible to me. Okay, sounds good. Thank you.